Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Finotex Chemicals Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Aarti Junjunwala, Executive Director. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Yusuf. Good morning, everyone, and a very happy and safe Diwali to all. We are pleased to extend a warm welcome to you all for our Q2 FY24 earnings conference call of Finotex Chemical Limited. We have already updated the financial statement and the presentation on the stock exchange and our website. Trust you've had the chance to peruse them in detail. Finotex is at the forefront of India's specialty chemical sector, renowned for its leadership in both domestic and international textile markets. With a commitment to market expansion, we are dedicated to pioneering new products, venturing into untapped territories, and delivering value-added services, including cutting-edge technical solutions. Against the backdrop of a positive domestic macroeconomic landscape, our journey in FY24 remains robust. Our core emphasis on developing high-performance chemicals, coupled with strategic initiatives, positions us for sustained growth. These endeavors not only forecast substantial expansion in the upcoming quarters, but also reaffirm our status as one of the market leaders in the chemical industry. Our extensive range of products and services is crafted to provide tailored solutions for our customers, reinforcing Finotex's commitment to excellence. We are pleased to announce that the quarter we successfully commissioned our 100 kilowatt peak solar power plant at Ambarnath facility. This strategic initiative not only enhances our long-term energy reliability, but also positions us at the forefront of environmental stewardship by minimizing the carbon emissions. This sustainable approach aligns us with our commitment to ethical practices and also provides us with a competitive edge in the industry. I'm also pleased to share that our commitment to sustainability has been recognized through the prestigious ESG badge conferred upon us by Dun & Bradstreet. This recognition highlights our proactive initiatives and signifies our ongoing dedication to shaping an industry that prioritizes environmental, social, and governance considerations. Our commitment to excellence, innovation, and the creation of a sustainable future is the path that we passionately undertake to ensure greener and safer environment. With this note, I would request Arindamji to provide us the insights into our operations. Uh, thank you, RTG, and a warm welcome to one and all. Wish you happy Diwali in advance. As you know, Phenotex is a well-diversified company with an extensive array of product portfolios. Our journey commenced with the production of specialty chemicals for the textile industry and subsequently expanded in related products for the niche segment, including hygiene products and oil and gas. As a part of our commitment to value-add offerings, we offer high-end customized solution to our esteemed clients in every sector. This approach is underpinned by the trust of our customers have in our products and the brand equality we command in the market. Our expertise in research and development, particularly in the manufacturing of eco-friendly and sustainable products at our overseas facility has served as the driving force behind our expansion in numerous significant international textile hubs. Also, during the quarter, we have received aggregation from NABL, India's premier aggregation body for laboratory assessment and accreditation. This accomplishment underscored our commitment to financial prudence and quality standard, reinforcing our position as a trusted entity in the chemical market field. Now, I request Mr. Sanjay to guide us through the quarterly performance of our company. Thank you.
संजय सर योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल थैंक्स अरिंदम जी ऑन द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ क्वार्टर टू फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर ऑपरेशनल रेवेन्यू रोज टू वन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी थ्री मिलियन द ग्रोथ इन रेवेन्यू वॉज ड्यू टू द इंक्रीज इन द सेल वॉल्यूम द बीटा हैज इंक्रीज टू थ्री हंड्रेड एंड एटी टू मिलियन अप बाई फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट ईयर ऑन ईयर बेसिस विद इट्स मार्जिन एट ट्वेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट थ्री परसेंटेज We recorded a pat of 315 million, which is up by 51.6 percent year-on-year basis, and its margin was at 21.7 percent. For the H1 financial year 24, our operation revenue has increased to 2,775 million. Our EBITDA has increased to 697 million, up by 36 percent year-on-year basis, and its margin was 25.1 percent. We recorded a pat of 576 million, which is up by 40.3 percent, and it, the margins stands at 20.8 percentage. Our annualized ROCE and ROE were at 36.4 percent and 30.3 percent, respectively. We are also pleased to announce that ICRA, the renowned credit rating, has upgraded our long-term and short-term rating at ICRA A plus and ICRA. A one plus respectively. The robust financial performance observed in the H one financial year twenty four underscores our commitment to creating values for our stakeholders and customers and upholding resilient and operational efficiencies. Our focus remains on fostering sustainable growth and optimizing shareholders' wealth through the upcoming fiscal year. Our consistent performance over the last quarters and. Yours is thanks to the strategic alliances which we have, and we continue to explore such opportunities in future too. With this, uh, we close our opening remarks, and we will open the call for interactive question and answer session soon. Over to you, Yusuf. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Sorish Pal from KRSP Capital Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? You are yeah, audible, sir, but there is a background noise from your end. Uh, okay, sir. My first question is: uh, uh, We, we uh, from our initial presentation, I can see that our uh, capacity utilization has gone up sequentially. Sequentially. Uh, so, in the coming quarters, can we expect some operating leverage going ahead as our revenues will go up? uh thanks so much uh, as such yes there has been a increase of 43% in the volumes year on year basis quarter on quarter basis i mean uh, on for the quarter year on year basis and also as you can rightly mentioned there has been an increase in the volume from quarter one basis also quarter on quarter basis uh, gradually yes we are ramping up the capacities of our new state of the art plant in number north and it's doing quite well and uh, we are uh, quite delighted from where we are looking at it in spite of let's say the uh, the global slowdown which we have experienced in the last 2 3 quarters we are still able to touch a utilization of 68% for this quarter mm-hmm. and uh, that is uh, last quarter was 62% broadly and yeah so we think that in the coming times there has been a uh, the demand is coming back very sharply in the textiles and the cleaning hygiene fmcg field and going forward yes uh, we are looking at a further production utilization uh, on the on the capacities which we have okay sir and sir uh, since textiles is our uh, high value uh, high high uh, value activity product high margin product so how is the recovery so far in this segment sir uh, 
uh, we are quite delighted with the recovery of the demand which is coming in the textiles, especially the bed sheets. Uh, let's say our customers like Indocounts and uh, Himmat Singha, Mohan Spintex and other companies, uh, they have been faring quite well. As you might have also, if uh, you are tracking them, they have been performing quite well. Uh, that is helping us also, and plus we have focused on you know the package operations and package uh, marketing in which we give the entire you know solutions to the textile companies in which the entire basket of the products have to be taken from Finotex. In this way, we are growing our wallet share also with them, focusing our main specialty products in the textiles, which is the finishing area. Uh, as such, finishing is today also let's say 60% of our textile volumes. And that is something which is the most uh, sustainable business because no textile company will, you know, will be able. Generally, it's not possible to change the finish easily. And we are the masters in the finishing of textiles. We would like to retain and keep focusing on our core uh, strengths in the textile, which is the finishing, and that's going very well. So textile has picked up uh, quite uh, quite well in the last quarter. But uh, textile will be always be, you know, it's the recovery is coming fast. Health and hygiene, FMCG is at the same level. I mean, in the sense, it's uh, good, but uh, they, it's growing gra gradually. But textile, I can see, has been quite uh, significant growth in the last quarter. Okay, sir. Last question from my side is, uh, actually, I'm new to the company. So what I can see is there is a volume growth of 43% year on year. Uh, but uh, that has not translated to our top line growth. So I guess uh, this growth is mainly to our uh, FMCG and hygiene related products. Is that understanding correct, sir? No, actually what is happening is as we have experienced in the last three, four quarters, there has been a change in our product mix. And also the more we focus on hygiene and FMCG areas, the average legislation prices are comparatively lesser. So although the volume growth has been 40% or 43% precisely, uh, the incremental, if we talk about the, you know, the incremental business sales, uh, that has not gone more than, uh, let's say, 30% or in terms of volumes, yeah, uh, sorry, I mean, in terms of 10% uh, uh, it has gone up from the, in the revenue mix because of the product mix has changed as such. Okay. And sir, what is the growth that we are expecting uh, this year? Earlier you given guidance of 20 to 25 percent. So is that when guidance maintained, sir? So as such, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we will take it as your last question because there are a lot of other uh, participants okay, 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 who okay, 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 there. Okay, okay. So okay, uh, anyhow, uh, just to answer that question would be that, uh, uh, so as such, in, we have been listed for last 50 quarters by now. And in our last uh, 12 or 13 years of being listed, our average CAGR growth of PAT and EBITDA has been more than 25%. And our EBITDA percentage, in uh, also you can always check, it has been minimum 16 to 18% till, till where we are today is 27% broadly, 26 point something. So this is the, the reason why here we are uh, able to do it because we are focused on solution driven product lines rather than uh, me too kind of businesses which always is fluctuating in terms of EBITDA and profitability and things. Uh, the way the last two, three years have been uh, encouraging for us, I am, uh, our team is, I, I think in, we are the most confident right now that we will be able to, you know, again deliver much better uh, performance in the future. That's all I can tell you from the forward looking uh, point of view. Okay, thank you, sir. That's very helpful. That's all from my side. Yeah. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participant, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. Next question is from the line of Sri Ram R, who is an investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so can you give the volume and value split for textile and other chemicals? See, as such, uh, I can just give you the uh, percentage uh, mix of it. So let's say... If uh, fifty-six percent of the volume is on the FMCG, and the remaining, let's say, is from textiles. From the volume point of view, uh, the textile average legislation prices are higher. So the uh, the I mean the uh, in terms of the revenue mix, it is more than fifty-nine percent for the textiles, and it's almost forty forty-one percent in, in I mean FMCG cleaning hygiene. 
and on the margin side sir uh margins uh, our company is more of a ebitda driven company uh, so what happens let's say uh, each industry will have their own plus and challenges so let's say in textiles what happens you have a better gross margins for sure uh, however there are a lot of expenses on the documentations and certification product audits factory audits team power exhibition this is what we have done in the last 3 4 years where we have invested a lot and that has really helped us to grow the company in the textile division substantially which is now shaping up which as you can see the results also so basically we do not operate from the point of view of a gross margin broadly which is more on the ebitda levels um, uh, more or less i can say it's almost the similar kind of uh, margins which we get on that leg on all the industries which we cater to so yeah. come sir i'll i'll join that thank you thank you yeah. thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may press star and one next question is from the line of kush tanan from ananta capital please go ahead uh, uh, good morning uh, sir congratulations once again on uh, a, a consistent uh, set of numbers uh, we are uh, witnessing uh, consistent growth in the company margin expansion cash on books uh, all the good things are happening so quickly uh, just on the environment in general for the chemicals uh, there was weakness in the last 6 months one year uh, obviously our numbers have been good but in general is the environment improving how are inventory levels in the channel for us specifically sir yeah thanks uh, tendan ji so actually you know in our last con call also i had somewhere mentioned that the the bottoms already behind us and uh, that was uh, if i'm not wrong it was the month of august or something and uh, that is what we can expect in the future i am quite uh, of the opinion that the bottom uh, demand or let's say the uh, downfall of the pricing and the destocking activity all have been completed in the quarter one for most of the commodity chemical companies whereas where we are coming from we have been always been as you can rightly mentioned also our profitability growth rates uh, efficiencies and deployment of capital has been always uh, quite in control with our always the past performance because we are more of a solution building business we are not a china plus one kind of a company our products are such specialty nature that there is no china effect here it's a tailor made solutions it's not a commodity which will have a, you know it's not a capex driven businesses where we are where you know like the chinese chinese type of product line so i think the environment has been improving number one for textiles definitely there has been an increase from the quarter one in the demand uh, it's also due to i think in the uh, you know in the us market there has been the demand is coming back and uh, i heard also there is the interest is also getting reversed and things like that so i think this as it goes ahead we will be back to the original demand of textiles and demand is coming back even the cleaning hygiene fmcg sector also so going forward we are quite excited on the next uh, coming times okay uh, and sir uh, i think uh, we focus more on the ebitda margin as you were answering the previous participants call but yeah. that has also gone up a little bit this quarter because uh, primarily at a material level our margin has improved uh so sir was there any one time uh, in this quarter or this is just that uh, uh, you know pass through of raw material uh, has been uh, better for us our pricing has gone up and raw material uh, 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 you know pass through has been better for us so i would like to mention in the last quarter also the beta margin was almost 24% Mm-hmm. and uh, let's say that was also the time when we i mean all the chemical companies were experiencing a destocking effect in which uh, you know everyone has inventory and you know of a higher price and things like that so i would not like to mention on uh, that is due to that part but it is more likely with our product positioning our wallet shares and the kind of specialty demand which has come in textiles and also in the cleaning hygiene there has been substantially new product and new geographies which we have identified and working upon so i would like to mention it's not only due to these uh, you know these talking of things like that it's because uh, the product lines and the 
the, the promotion of the products and the focus is done on the specialty chemicals and solutions. So I think that is something which is going on. This was always anticipated. I think in some of the calls we have always mentioned that we are very much confident that we will be able to, uh, you know, maintain that much EBITDA level. And that okay. is uh, already being seen now in the quarter two. Understood. So what you are saying is that, uh, you know, going ahead, probably our, our uh, chances of maintaining 24 to 26% EBITDA is quite high, given the, given the product mix and, uh, and, 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 and in general, the demand environment. Yeah, it's looking like that also because you see what happens in our businesses, there is a lot gestation period. So the investments and the sales promotions for all the, the verticals which we have, which we have done in the last one year, one and a half year, uh, which has started materializing. Now the results are also coming on that line. So also you can see the H1. Uh, the H1 EBITDA is already 25.13% as I see now. So that is something I am. we are very confident to keep uh, delivering on that line. Okay. So and one just book, bookkeeping question. On the volume and value mix across textile and FMCG, I don't know whether you have already mentioned this. I joined the call a little late. But yeah. can you just give, give those numbers? Yeah, so uh, as such, the average relation price of textile is higher. Uh, so the uh, let me say that the volumes in textiles is 44% broadly, and the revenues is like 59%. And the remaining you can convert, take it as uh, for the like 56% volumes is on the FMCG, and almost 40 41% is their revenue mix for the FMCG. Okay. And so if I can just chip in one last question on the yeah, yeah. SMCG business, uh, we obviously have a large customer. Uh, any other breakthroughs uh, in, in some of these other other detergent companies uh, which you are having some R and uh, some prototyping or some product, uh, yeah. you know, yes, any, any update on that? Sir? I mean, there is a lot of things happening day in, day out. In fact, we had a great uh, technical seminar last week, last Saturday which in uh, Northeast and that was attended by the uh, biggest, uh, biggest mid-level uh, corporate uh, companies in the cleaning hygiene detergent field. And that's uh, shaping up very rapidly. Our team has released our distributors and our uh, wallet shares also increasing in most of the corporate companies also. Also, there are certain uh, big global MNCs with whom we are on the stage of, uh, but the global MNCs do take it's all years of efforts, like Patanli started, it took us three years to start, almost two and a half years to start. So these, I mean, uh, you know, it's the sweetest spot for us to be there in the FMCG, but at the same time, it's the most difficult because the FMCG company, let's say Patanli for that matter, they are using our products in their detergents, okay. And for Patanli, their major business is not detergents, it's the, it's the entire brand chain for aloe vera, uh, Dant Kranti and uh, ghee and other uh, organic ghees and things like that. So they have to be more careful, obviously, that, you know, there should not be any kind of issues happening in the product where they are using our specialty product. So their trust on us is a testimonial that, you know, this kind of a uh, like 50,000 crore brand is looking at us and accepting our products over to all the uh, multinational chemical companies like PSF and Dow and things like that, which I have already mentioned in our last Concord also. So that is a testimonial that, you know, we stand against them. Our products are performing better. Of course, the economies will also be performing better. So that is something which excites us. And then that's really the sitting time. So we are on the right track. We are very happy where it's how the progress is happening. And I think uh, uh, this you will see in the reflections of the things in the coming times. Okay. And, and so just one thing, last thing I'm noticing, we are generating a lot of cash. Uh, and, and I think this, this year we may generate north of 110, 120 crore operating cash. So any, yeah. and we already have some 180, 200 crore cash on the books. So any, yeah. any utilization of this cash going ahead uh, in terms of uh, rewarding shareholders or any, uh, you know, inorganic activity or any such, uh, you know, uh, avenues for, for further growth? Correct. So, uh, yes, you have rightly mentioned our cash on books uh, is already, as you mentioned, the numbers. So, as such, when, uh, after our IPO in 2011, we had uh, used the IPO proceeds to acquire stake in a European manufacturing company, which we, is Biotex, which is 72% is owned by Finotex. Now it's in Malaysia. It's a specialty chemical high-end 
for functional chemicals and things like that. So that was the first made in international acquisition what the company has done. So as such, uh, we are using, we are, you know, having in mind to use this cash generated for the organic growth, which is already been funded by Intel Accruals. At the same time, we are also having, uh, you know, we do, uh, we are open for discussions on inorganic opportunities. We keep uh, looking at things. Uh, however, we are a very cash disciplined company. As you can see in the last so many years, we have always been cash rich company as such and debt free. We would like to remain as such a debt free company more or less. And uh, from the perspective that, you know, we are very conservative and disciplined in deployment of cash. So we do not want to just go for any kind of inorganic acquisitions just for, you know, Pesa hai and, you know, the, I mean, just to get it into, we have to have a proper synergy, a plan, and uh, there has to be a meaning for any inorganic opportunities if ever we go ahead. So there are certain things which we keep discussing, certain topics are on also. Uh, whenever the timing is right, and as such, you can see every year we are getting a approval in the shareholders meeting also for raising uh, uh, funds and uh, debt also and the, you know, for any kind of such, such deals. So yes, uh, we have, we are not, uh, hurrying about anything on such points, but yes, we can always consider that. Okay. Okay. Noted, sir. Congratulations on this consistent uh, growth and consistent numbers and wish you all the best for the future. Thank you so much, Mr. Tandy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on a good set of uh, performance. Uh, sir, my first question is, uh, is for the FMCG segment. Uh, we have done a very good uh, commendable performance growing from 38 crores to 200 crores within a year. So I have two questions in this. One out of the 270 crores that uh, revenues we have done as on H1 FI24, how much is from the FMCG segment, that is what question one. And question two is, uh, we have we were depending exclusively on very few customers in this segment. You have de you have explained in detail, you know, what all the actions that have taken. Uh, for us to diversify based on your interaction with the customers, how much time it would take to get business from other customers? So thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, let me mention the, yes, uh, the, even in the H1, the contribution of the FMCG business in terms of revenue mix is 40% broadly. And uh, that has been maintained and uh, that has been growing also. Uh, let me say that, you know, in oil and gas businesses or maybe the detergent businesses, we will always have certain bigger customers like, uh, you know, because the markets are mainly controlled and addressed in oil and gas also by the bigger producers and bigger things. So as such, uh, step by step, if I'm not wrong, we have already touched more than 100 customers in the in the in detergent businesses or Pan India. And uh, this is growing rapidly. In fact, uh, we just had a meeting with at least 60, 70 customers in the last uh, week's uh, technical seminar where our uh, you know, panel doctors and our other team members were also been, uh, you know, speaking about the new scope and the new sustainability which is coming in. So the, you know, the idea and the concept what we are bringing to the detergents is something different. So I'm not touching on those topics now, just to cover on your questions is, uh, we are very much optimistic the way it is going on. And uh, in the future, I think the, both the divisions are going to perform in their own uh, you know, there has been a growth coming up in the both the divisions, and I think we are quite, uh, uh, you know, we're quite excited from where we are looking at it. Okay, small clarification. You said uh, of the 270 crores, what is the contribution from the FMCG? You said 40%? 40%, yeah. So let's say 110 broadly. Okay, okay, fair enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, my yeah. second question is regarding the oil drilling business, which you touched upon. Uh, sir, in the presentation you have mentioned that you have already got the business from a customer so i have you know for what i want to know is one what are the products that we make for this uh, segment how big is the potential and when we can see a significant uh, contribution from this you know the products from these products see i will tell you what is our uh, business model our business model is that for oil and gas and other businesses we 
we look at chemistry so we do basically polymerization esters esterification phosphorylation sulfonation we do homo polymer ter polymer co polymer things like that these all chemistries have application in different variety of industries our okay. focus is wherever industry can absorb these products we can work on that so that we have a synergy in our capacity utilizations and uh, you know there is a you know it's 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 uh, we have the same kind of chemistry is going for the other businesses like oil and gas also now oil and gas in business is mostly let's say it's uh, you know it's a, like a tender based business it's more of a hit and run business so it's not a perennial dependable business it's more about sometimes we get an order <coughs> sometimes we don't there are a lot many products we are doing yesterday also we had a good uh, you know tender and things like that which is ongoing on many aspects so i would like to mention we are not banking in our future on one particular industry as such oil and gas industry the scope is enormous however it always has its plus and minuses that the you know the disadvantage of oil and gas is it's too uh, you know it's too sometimes the demand which has been shown is not happening because oil and gas extraction is sometimes postponed for 6 months or more than that also and sometimes some of the rigs are not working well so suddenly the demands will not happen for that product for 6 months or four months so we do not want to depend on this kind of industry totally we are already diversified at the same time the products and chemistries which we are doing for other businesses we are very much happy to use it for the oil and gas as a fungible capacity utilization so this is our model and uh, so this is the kind of uh, the scope in oil and gas is enormous i mean there is no words about it because the products which we are doing we do anti scalants we do uh, polyamines we do poly uh, polyglycols and other so many items which we are already products are already approved and supplied also in the past so this is the place where we are so you mean to say this cannot be a, a continuous business it comes once in a while whenever we are the l1 for those businesses correct yes it's it it is not continuous rather i would say we are not depending on that because it's not a perennial business or dependable and sustainable from the terms of supply sometimes there are cases i mean it's not for us it's for everyone sometimes there are situations where the you know the tender url one but they are not lifting it only and these things do happen because these are government owned bodies like oil india ontc then things like that okay fair enough sir so my last question is regarding the other vertical uh, you know other specialty uh, chemicals uh, just wanted to know how big is the potential uh, you know which can contribute uh, you know to the top line from this segment regarding some clarity on the margins and uh, are we marketing the eurodyne products in this segment yeah, i'll tell you the way we look at it we are like to focus on our core businesses our core businesses one providing specialty solutions to textiles and cleaning hygiene fmcg this is our core business this okay. business itself is like detergent business is a 50 billion dollar market and there is a sustainability which is going to happen which is already happening on the way in the next 10 years we will find a lot of changes happening in the detergent businesses initiative of png and uh, unilevers and things like that let's say png have also made a claim that by 26 or 27 they will be stopping the use of acid slurry and lapsa in their product lines or something like that to avoid the you know the fossil fuels and dependency on crude oil and things like that now then there has to be a product which is performing equivalent even though it's expensive but to give a right result to the user and in the hand washes or the washing machines and things like that now those things can be done by solutions now that's the place where we enter now if uh, uh, let's say textiles was the same thing 10 years back we were telling the world when we acquired biotech they were the masters of sustainable solutions we were talking to all the biggest textile corporate companies around 2011 but the demand came from 2020 when the covid started coming in sustainability issue has started coming in and things like that so jaake ye spread hone laga just imagine even if 10% of the detergent market in the world converts into sustainability in the now over the 10 years we are talking of another 5 billion dollar market opportunity coming in at the moment we do not want to get into any other areas which we are not on i mean which is which is uh, you know not our key strength let's say yeah product wise hai like water treatment now water treatment and detergents are quite similar we are looking at water treatment already as such because okay. detergents bhi pani mein use hota hai water treatments is also been used to purify the water and you know avoid the hardness of the water and things like that 
so that is something what we have been focusing on so we do not want to experiment our time and the time is going very well for us and we are already having a lot of opportunities on the table to look at rather than we do and find something new which we are not masters of so we like to focus on our core business it doesn't excite us if some other business of pharma related business or something different is uh, you know shaping up in a different uh, directions so we are like to stay where we are into okay thank you very much sir and wish you all the best thank you so much thank you next question is from the line of ashish rati from lucky investments please go ahead uh, hi sanjeev thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to ask and uh, i congratulate you and the team for uh, delivering uh, beyond our expectations uh, most of the times uh, so i wanted to just ask you one simple question you know it's not very uh, most of the questions have been answered it's just that sir on the ebitda margin side you've been guiding us uh, to a 50 to 100 basis point expansion every year and uh, clearly the first half seems to be doing uh, far better than the guidance so is it something that needs to be revisited Uh, thanks Ashish ji uh, i would like to also mention uh, you are rightly said that we have been always guiding that you know we are confident of delivering the beta numbers uh, percentages uh, what we have been doing in the past and always there will be some growth let me also mention generally for the business where we are the h2s are generally better than h1s generally and uh, and we have already said quite well as you said 25% in the h1 and i would like to mention that uh, the kind of uh, you know the exp- the investments which we have already done on sales promotion exhibitions and you know certification factory audits and th- those audits and you know the product certifications have been quite a cost to the books as such and after doing that we have been able to uh, you know start getting the returns because these are certain kind of product lines which we have been able to succeed with biggest customers so going forward i wouldn't say that this is uh you know uh i mean of course this is easily maintainable for us right now the way things are going on so i think that's again what we would like to mention here fantastic so, that that sounds great yeah, here hopeful that we will be uh, ha- having at least uh, where we are today great 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 and uh, specifically on the uh, uh, you know i know the previous part of an asked something on the similar line but we have uh, a large customer for which we are doing some specific business in the detergent and cleaning uh, segment right and uh, we have launched uh, two products any more products uh, in the pipeline immediately for uh, uh, you know which can be scalable so we have not launched two we have launched we had launched two categories and now there are many more categories which are already launched and started selling also and uh, this will keep on going on and uh, so step by step you will see that you know things are happening in those businesses and those categories more and more so basically so for the detergent and cleaning uh, yeah this is specifically for, sorry for cutting you this specifically on the detergent and cleaning mm-hmm. one very large customer we have two big products right which contribute to a sizable uh, number i was asking any such sizable significant product in the pipeline in the near term is there or uh, you know it is going to be more generic uh, products which will be applied applied to all uh, all kind of companies not typically to be more precise we have started another product also with them which okay. has just gone for trial orders and things like that so i will okay. not hear i mean i would not like to uh, uh, promise the moon now but okay. uh, the point is that we are very happy where we are things take time to happen in this businesses and what we are aiming at is there is a great sustainability opportunity waiting for us and the faster the sustainability mm-hmm. happens in the in the entire world for mm-hmm. you know for the because detergents ka kya hai i mean uh, what happens with detergents is directly this water is going for the you know for the water pollution and things like that and that cannot be stopped easily so it's the detergents which has to have those kind of sustainable raw materials and at the same time of course the customers will demand performance so that's the place where we are coming in. and our competitors are like bsf and dow for them this business is not uh, a uh, sizeable at all from the i mean i mean they are like tens of billions of dollar company so maybe from that point of view they, it doesn't it's not their focus area for us yes it's a focus area okay i'm not sure if this has been asked before but what is the capex plan for fi 20 uh, 5 oh uh, well we are already uh, you know looking at organic expansions and uh, in two ways adding some machineries in our existing facilities and also adding some certain facilities in uh, areas which are more uh, closer to mumbai we are looking at these kinds of uh, organic expansion and uh, we have already shortlisted and things are going ahead on that lines 
this is similar to the same experience which we had in the COVID-1 in 2020 when we had this Ambarnath plan going forward and it took us two years. So in chemicals, as you know, those things, it takes two to three years always, you know, to right. set up it and commission it. So we are already looking at 2027, how do we shape up and uh, 26 and how do we shape up our uh, next growth phase on that. So we need to get prepared now. The capacity utilization, I mean, the, the CapEx uh, plan for this year should be around, uh, I think, 50 to 60, more or less on the higher level. And I think this will be easily being taken care of by Intel Nakul. So that it will be still a debt-free company for us. That's a given. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sunil. We wish you uh, all the best. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishit Jain from SNJ Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, could you tell me how much of our revenue uh, comes from exports? Uh, almost 23% uh, is coming from exports. It's uh, yeah, almost 23% is exports. Okay, and going forward, uh, do we expect that in H2 or maybe in next financial year this percentage contribution may increase or something like that? Or this will be steady? Oh, well, uh, as uh, see, there is a lot of changes in the global market being happening now. And especially in the textile market, the, let's say, the the big countries who are addressing to textiles are getting bigger and there is a consolidation happening on that front. And at the same time, I can mention in the last two quarters, the global demand has been quite weak. And uh, so that's the reason our, and our India performance has been growing also. So I think that's the reason, you know, we are on uh, almost 22 to 23% broadly right now. Once upon a time, it was, I think, 35% or something like that. So this okay. is something uh, as the things, uh, you know, we are doing very well in the export demand markets also. We are increasing our exposure. We are participating in almost all the trade fairs happening around the world. In every, let's say, uh, yearly at least uh, four to five international exhibitions our team has been uh, exhibiting at. So we are, I mean, and then the markets, uh, sometimes the demand and, you know, these things keep fluctuating. Uh, going forward, I think the exports are also going to revive as such. Okay, that's great. And just uh, one last thing. So, uh, as we understand that the, in the commodity chemical space, most, more or less things have bottomed out. So, uh, do we also expect that going forward, if the commodity chemical space uh, prices for the companies bottoms out, our raw materials can see some rise? See, it has been going down uh, in the past, and then there was a shoot up also uh, to some extent. Let's say a contribution from the Middle East also, uh, due to the the war type situation in the Middle East, uh, that helped the commodity prices to have a you know recovery. Again, there has been on the same level. There is uh, it's let's say it's not a direct direction, but yeah, I can we can always say it is the prices are better than. I mean, it has bottomed out in the past. That's what we can see right now. But we cannot predict. It's a very volatile situation. And uh, let me say, even if the prices are going down, for us, like we are in the specialty kind of a business, it's like if the prices of commodity chemicals go down, those are our raw mats. So it's always good for us to have more, better pricing in the raw mats, and then our selling price is always the same. So, you know, we can have a better EBITDA margins also. Yes, well, but that's what I. Uh, that's why I meant. Yeah, if those things have bottomed out, if those raw material prices, and now if there is a recovery in the prices, then it may affect our margins. Oh, well, uh, not necessary because it is. Uh, you know, when the prices are getting corrected, there is also a uh, inventory levels are getting diminished in almost all the companies. Like in textiles, generally the the inventory levels were always like six months from the time the cotton is uh, you know made and. Uh, and the, uh, the fabric is sold at the malls in Walmarts and things like that. Now, what happens with the pricing going up again? There is again an inventory increase, and everybody is demanding more products. And then it's always good for the industry to have slightly pep up mood. So once the mood goes up, and that time the consumers are also, you know, getting more anxious to buy more, produce more, and things like that. So it doesn't. These things I can say in the last two years everything has happened we have seen container shortages we have seen chinese supplies going off indian companies this and that so everything what we have experienced and you know in the last two years has happened in our books 
Uh, in spite of that, we have already been able to increase our EBITDA margin. So I don't think it's at a challenge because we are a solution business. We always have a chance to increase our cost. It's not a tender-based yearly contract or anything like that in our businesses and we sell to our customers. So we can always adjust the prices. Okay, thank you so lot. That helps. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Varsha from BQ Prime. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, so sorry if my questions are repeating uh, because I've joined uh, late. So my first question is, though there was growth in volume, but it didn't translate into uh, revenue per se. And uh, you said that we don't have much pressure on prices because we are into specialty chemicals. So why the volume growth has not been translated into revenue growth? This is my first See, question. There has been, uh, I think yeah, I, had, I, I have somewhere answered this uh, point in a different way in our uh, phone call today. So basically what happens is uh, in the cleaning hygiene FMCG businesses, the average relation prices are lower, number one. Uh, number two, we have been having consistent realization for in textiles in terms of uh, the pricing and uh, almost let's say a little bit lower in health and hygiene there has been a change in the product mix as such we have been able to grow our uh, businesses in the cleaning hygiene as well and uh, that is also contributing that in spite of the volume increase of 40 percent there has not been a great sharp increase in the prices of you know in the in the turnover but still, we have done almost twelve uh, percent or something like that broadly. Okay, uh, and my next question is: uh, uh, over the over the few quarters, we have seen our EBITDA margins growing I mean, very healthy growth. So uh, in September 22, we had margins of 19 percent versus 26 percent this year. So uh, what has led to increasing the EBITDA margins? Number one, and are these margins sustainable? See, uh, uh, it's how do I answer this actually? So sustainability, I mean, if you see our 50 quarters of being listed, we have always been having at least 15, 17% in the most difficult quarters also. And, uh, and, and in the last eight or 10 quarters, you can always see there has been an increase of 200 basis point per quarter broadly. And uh, this is something which we have been doing. This is, I think this reflects what kind of a capital allocation we are doing, what kind of uh, strategies we have, the kind of customers and the solutions we are providing to them and exciting them to add more performance to their fabric because of which we are able to have those kinds of beta. So I think it's more on the, I can say on the R&D and the product quality which we have been doing and uh, that's proving itself in the translation of the beta. Uh, going forward, I can say uh, we have been always guiding if you were attending our con calls in the last uh, couple of quarters we have always been guiding and quite optimistic that yes, we will be able to maintain our beta margins. It's uh, definitely there. And I will still like to say the same, that we will be quite, we are very confident to, uh, you know, have set, uh, you know, approximately the similar margins going forward. Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anirudh from AV Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Yes. Hello. Your, your audible, please uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Sanjay sir, uh, congratulations once again. It's getting a habit now, but congratulations again. So my, just one question regarding capacity utilization and uh, uh, capacity expansion. So you just mentioned that around 50 to 60,000 uh, is what we're looking at in the next year for capacity utilization. I just wanted to know what, what portion of it is going to be from the Ambana facility and uh, is there a new facility that we're targeting now? Because I think the last thing we spoke, we had like what, 15, 15 20,000 uh, capacity left in the Ambana facility? Yeah, okay, I will uh, answer it in a different way. So as such, uh, we have been increasing our capacity utilization. And today we have reached almost 68% on a, uh, approximately. Uh, last quarter it was 62%. Uh, the, the idea here is, you know, any kind of capacity or organic expansion when we do, we need a, a timeline of almost two years or one year for a new plant to set up and things like that. 
like i already mentioned we are looking at certain not immediate quarter or two quarters but we are looking at already 26 financial year and things like that for which we have to be prepared from today so yes we will be expanding our capacities in the new facilities whenever we acquire it number one and uh, in the existing also there is some space and we can always increase certain capacities at that area also so i mean that's uh, the kind of guidelines we have been uh, doing and uh, the capacity utilization of 60% as you can also see the capex cost is not dramatic for our businesses because we are in a fungible capacities our capacities and products are all fungible so the same set of production uh, plant and machinery can produce the goods for cleaning hygiene it can produce for textiles oil and gas and things like that so it helps us to have a better efficiency you can see our asset turnover ratio which is always healthy and that's the kind of uh, specialty product lines which we have been making in our uh, plants So going forward, I think yes, we will be increasing our capacities uh, in a, another plant also and in our existing plant as well. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, you may press star and one. We have a next follow-up question from the line of Sri Ram R, who is an investor. Please go ahead. and this is the opportunity uh, so what is the market size for uh, the domestic textile chemicals and what is the market share and you know if you can throw some light on who will be our nearest competitor that will be helpful and again on the margin side uh, i mean uh, you know on a on a uh, yoy basis uh, you know the gross margins have gone up from 31 to 39% so i'm just trying to understand like which products have the exited or you know what is the new product that we are focusing upon you know can you throw some light on the product wise uh, uh, you know uh, details is that will be helpful so i will have to you know take one question at one time because you have combined a lot of questions right now so i can just okay. uh, mention in terms of uh, uh, you know the let's say i'll take the last question first is about the gross margins so as such uh, yes uh, there has been increase it will it's also because the kind of solutions and the product line which we are offering for textile finishing and for the cleaning hygiene and other businesses those products are getting more in demand which are more technical solutions and more sustainable solutions which we are pioneer of now the more and more demand which is happening in those lines we have been able to increase our uh, you know the gross margins and also the beta margins because of that so this is something which we are always anticipating to happen and it's shaping up quite nicely so that answers your gross margins question uh, at the same time for the market share see actually this business i'll tell you what we have been doing we have here earlier our main business was we were supplying to all the european multinational chemical companies who were selling under their brand the products and they were selling at a very high margins to the textile users thereafter we developed our own brand our own set of technical team our distributors channel partners and going to the direct customers and branding our products itself with all the documentation factory audits and product audits and research and other thing so that kind our major competitors in this business are the global european companies who were first while our let's say customers and now we are let's say a uh, sort of co producers with them which is acroma first while clarion then it is uh, you know huntsman which is now part of acroma earlier it was known as seba then there is bsf which is part of acroma again so there has been a lot of consolidation happened in the european giants as well in the textile division i am talking about and that has helped us also to become more strategic and more quicker and uh, as i see most of these european companies were also diversified or high of their businesses because the margins in textiles which was once upon a time 400% has come to 40% broadly and that helped us you know i mean that that helped us because the european companies always having a let's say not an efficient way of handling the affairs of the company and they are always having a higher overheads and things like that because of which even after 400% gross margins they were not able to make the right bottom line i'm talking of almost a decade or two before from where we are today and that time most of the companies started diversifying to other businesses which were more profitable we were in this business we were able to develop our brand name which takes a lot of time in textiles because textile business in solutions is like changing the salt of the food nobody will change the salt of the food similarly the textile customers do not change the 
chemicals which they are using over the period of years because the cost for them is negligible at the same time the risk is very high if something goes wrong the entire fabric is wasted so it's not a price game it's more on dependability reliability and how do we position ourselves so basically we are we are the doctors of textiles and in those product lines we are working we are working on the on the specialty products which are going for textiles not on the commodity products for textiles as such we can always add on more products for textile chemicals which are more commoditized but we do not want to be but you know our our questioning is by the customer is on the specialty high end and which would love to happen like that we are not a turnover based business company which is only looking for volumes and turnovers and ebitda margins nahi hai so we are we don't want to be commodity chemicals we are a specialty chemical companies and our customers have a trust on us and giving us the chance for that so if we are the cardiologists of the textile industry we do not want to be the general physicians let's say put it like that so we are going in that directions where the entire market size is not the topic at all actually the markets are dramatically very big i mean it's about textiles every textile company requires 3% textile chemicals of their turnovers so that's the business area what is important for us is the kind of customers we have we do not have one segment customers we have customers for cotton we have for polyester we have for towels for nylon for bed sheets for the continuous machines for exhaust machines this is more important for acrylics so ke ye business mein kya hota hai it's more, more lot of me to businesses are there it's not like one you make a, a paracetamol and everyone can take the same product whether it's a cotton or polyester or acrylic or nylon it doesn't work like that there is a totally technically we have to be sure of the customized solutions which have to be given which is working only for that customer so there is a lot of squs we have we have more than 1400 squs by the way so we are positioned and that's the reason we have this kind of ebitda so we have become i would not say irreplaceable but it's a very difficult for any company to replace and that's the reason there is a very high entry exit barrier so the risk of changing a chemical is very high for the consumers so that's the places where we are right now and we are uh, this has been built over the period of years we are working with i mean you can name india's top corporate customers and we are working with almost all uh, you know but that's because of the trust they have and that helps us to grow the businesses rapidly and we are going for volume share increase also from them which is easily helping us to you know we can always double x our business in the coming years even if we focus on the same customers where we are already working right now so i would like to give you you know the overview of our business model in that direction rather than uh, just jumping on numerical answers for you thank you for a very elaborate answer thank you so much that helps all the thank, thank you Ladies and gentlemen, we will take this as the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Tebriwala for the closing comments. Uh, thank you, participants. Uh, wishing you all a very happy Diwali, happy and safe Diwali. Please, uh, we are very accessible. Our team is always looking forward to answer any of your queries. Due to time constraint and things, we were not able to continue this uh, uh, session further. please write to us for any uh, question query we'll be happy to share as much as information we can do uh, thank you so much once again over to you yusuf thank you very much sir on behalf of finotex chemicals limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you